Hello friends, welcome back to another awesome day. Day 51 of the 100 days of hell with Python algo trading. Today, we'll be starting with the fourth chapter that is expression profit and loss. Previously, we have covered three chapters and if you have any doubt, please let me know in the comments. We can discuss that again. So without a further ado, let's get started with the fourth chapter. So when you read this book, there is a beautiful line on the first page of this fourth chapter and that says, at expiration, the option is worth exactly its intrinsic value. Zero if it is out of the money and difference between underlying price and the strike price if it is in the money. And we have understood the concept of in the money, at the money and out of the money. So let's try to understand this line, what it is trying to say. If you understand this line completely, then this fourth chapter is completed. Means you can say that this one line consists the whole summary of this fourth chapter. So let's get started. So it says at expiration an option worth exactly its intrinsic value. Zero if it is out of the money and if it is in the money then it will be difference between the underlying price I will write U price and strike price I will write S price. Hope it's clear it is very easy. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example and then we will also understand this in Python because at the end of the day we are learning all these concepts to apply these in the quant trading or the algo trading. If you want to understand more on the concept of ITM, ATM and OTM please refer to the previous videos, previous two videos and you will be having a crystal clarity. Let's say we know that what is premium? Premium is the options price, right? So I can write it like this. Premium has two components. One is intrinsic value plus extrinsic value, correct? And we know that this extrinsic value is also known as time value. So we can say that as the option reaches its expiration, this extrinsic value or the time value tends to zero. Means we can say we have the maximum time value when the option is far away, when the option is moving towards its expiration, the time value tends to decrease. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. Let's say this is a call option, right? Okay. So in terms of call option, what happens? Let's say this is your payoff axis, that is Y. And this is your uh, price axis, right? Now, I can write here X is the price y is the p and l you can say correct now let's say your underlying price is 500 and you were able to buy this call option at the price of 400 the price of 400 means we can say underlying price is 500 and strike prices sp is 400 now the premium of this option is let's say 50 dollars right so you can write here premium is equals to 50. As we know that this x axis is price and this y axis is the PNL. So when you buy the call option, what happens? By default, you are in the loss of 50, which is the price of premium. So you can write here like this 50, negative 50, and positive 50. So we know that until and unless this underlying price is below the strike price, you are in the loss of. $50 because of the premium cost, right? As soon as it reaches 400 and it is above the 400, let's say around 450. Now what will happen? You are at zero loss, zero profit. And this is known as the break even point, correct? So I'll just draw here. This is the strike price. And this one 500 is the, let's say, underlying price. Now as the underlying price increases, then what will happen? You will be getting the profit, right? It depends on the uh, terms and conditions. Here we are considering that on every $1 underlying price increases, you get $1 profit. So at 500, you will be in plus 50. Then it's unlimited profit, right? So it can go up to any price. So this is the payoff chart for the call option. Similarly for the put option, we have understood previously, right? It will be the opposite which you can refer in the previous video, but let me quickly show you. Let's say this is uh, your chart and 
let's say this is a strike price. So as long as the underlying price is greater than the strike price, you will be in loss, right? Let me quickly draw this. So like this. And as soon as you reach the strike price and above it, you will be in little bit profit. And here will be your break even point. And above this, you will be in profit. Correct. So this is the payoff diagram for the uh, put option. I can write here put option. Correct means we can say in case of call option, the buyer will exercise its option on expiry only when he is in profit means only when the option price is in the money and when it is in the money in case of call option here. Right here at this place after this. So he will exercise only this time because he has the right, not the obligation. If he wants, he will exercise. If he doesn't want, he will not exercise. Means this line is true that on expiry, the option is worth exactly its intrinsic value. You can see here, this is the intrinsic value, which is in the money and option is worth that only. So below this, this will be negative and we will not consider that. Why? Because it's our right. We won't take the trade when we are in loss in terms of option trading. Right? Similarly here also, we will not take the trade when we are in negative. We will only take the trade when we are in positive or in profit. Right. Now let's try to understand this with the help of Python. So if you can see on the screen, we have a sample code in which we have the underlying prices. You can see here that's an NPRA and the strike price for the call option is 95 and the strike price for put option is 110. Now when we talk about the payoff for the call option, it will be the maximum of these two value. We know that this is the ITM, the difference between underlying price and strike call that will be ITM and this zero is the OTM. So whichever the price will be greater, we will select that only because it's our right in uh, option. Similarly for the payoff for the put option, we will select the maximum number, right? Now these are just for the visualization. So don't need to worry about the this code, right? If you understand, it's okay. If you don't, then don't be stressed. Now let me show you the chart. So here you can see that this red line is out of the money for the call option. And this blue vertical line is the strike price for the call option, which is 95. And above it, we have the ITM in the money, right? So this will be the profit of the call option trade, right? Similarly for the put option, this red displays the out of the money and below this put strike price, we have the profit, right? Hopefully it's very clear. And this chart was without the premium. You can see here, we also have the premium here and here when we have the OTM, we are in negative five in terms of uh, call option, in terms of uh, put option, we also have in the uh, negative and when the underlying price is uh, greater than strike price in terms of call option, we are in positive, which is ITM and in terms of put option, when the underlying price is less than the strike price, we are in the positive. It was just a basic demonstration for better understanding. Hopefully it's clear for you, right? You should not be having any doubt in this chart. Because in the upcoming videos, we have to go more deeper and deeper in these kind of charts. And this is not difficult. You just have to put your little bit effort and you will be able to understand this very clearly. Right. So let me know if you have any doubt until this place, because this is very important and it is your base. So you have to build it very strong. And in any case, right here, one more thing to understand that if you can see here, this is the ITM right in the money and this is also known as the intrinsic value why because we have seen in the concept that at expiration let's say if you immediately exercise this option what will happen the option price will exactly equal to its intrinsic value why because here if you exercise this there is no time value only the intrinsic value and that is also known as the itm in the money similarly when we talk about the put option if it is positive let's say here and if you exercise this option immediately here what will be the intrinsic value, whatever the value, which is the ITM in the money. Because here also the OTM will zero and you can say the time value will be zero, right? Hopefully it's clear because it is a little bit complex initially when you're trying to understand this, but ultimately it becomes easier day by day, right? Okay, then move to the next topic, which is parity graphs, which is we have already seen the parity graphs previously, but let's understand these again with the help of Python. Okay, now let me quickly explain you the four parity charts for long call, short call, long put and short put, right? So let's understand this. So in the first example, you can see that a long call position becomes profitable when the underlying asset price exceeds the strike price 
plus the premium paid, which we have understood thoroughly in the previous sessions. Right now we have three conditions in which the underlying price is in one case 70, second 80 and in third it is 90. And similarly, the strike price is same for all the three cases that is $75 and premium is also $5. So let's try to understand the profit and loss at the different uh, scenarios. So if you can see in the chart, so here in case of long call option, when the price is 70, which is here, so we have paid a premium of $5. So as an option buyer, when the underlying price is below the strike price, you are always in negative of the premium amount. So you can see here, here we have the loss of $5, right? Here we have the loss of $5, right? Okay, now let's say if the underlying price is increasing and now the underlying price is, is at $80 and here the profit and loss is zero. Why? Because we know that the strike price is 75 and the underlying price is 80 and here we have paid a premium of $5. So means no profit, no loss at this place. Now, after this, it becomes in the money ITM and the option price is equal to the intrinsic value, which is the ITM, right? We have seen that. Okay, so now you will be having the scope of unlimited profit in the option buying in this uh, long call option. And as long as your price is increasing, you will be having the uh, profit in this case. Similarly, we have the example of short call in which we have the same scenarios, uh, three cases. Now you can see that in terms of short call option, when the underlying price is 90, when the underlying price is 75, and when the underlying price is 70, right? So the profit varies uh, here also. So here is the case of long put, and all these three scenarios are same, only the profit and losses changed. So you can have a look at this code and this chart, and you can understand this, that what is happening here, right? It's very easy. Just apply your mind and uh, ask any questions if you have. And similarly, this is the example of short put. Here also in the short put, we have three scenarios when the underlying price is 70, 80 and 90, right? You can see here in the chart clearly. Okay, now let's come to the slope table. So here you can see that in case of long call, when the underlying price is below the strike price, the slope is zero. I can show you when the underlying price is below the strike price, which is here, the slope will always be zero, right? Because what is slope? Slope is rise over the run. So here there is no rise means the slope will be zero. And now when the underlying price is greater than the strike price, the slope will tend to increase. It will try to go in the positive direction. So this is what this says about the strike price. It is positive and increasing and slope description is slope changes from the zero to positive as the price exceeds the strike and the gain increases with the price. Similarly for the short call, when the underlying price is below the strike price, it is zero. And when the underlying price is above the strike price, it is negative and decreasing, right? I can show you it here. This is for the short. So when the underlying price is less than the strike price, the slope is zero, right? When the underlying price is more than the strike price here, it is the slope is negative and it is decreasing. You can see here it will be decreasing because what is the slope? Rise over the run. So rise is negative here and run is positive so it will tend to decrease so you can say slope in case of short call will be will be negative and decreasing right so this is what the uh, slope table uh, explains and similarly so in case of long put when the underlying price is below the strike price the slope is negative and decreasing and when it is above the strike price it is zero similarly for the short put when the underlying price is below the strike price the slope is positive and increasing and when it is above the strike price it is zero right because there is no rise so and at the strike price all slopes are zero because there is no rise and no run hopefully it is crystal clear up to this point because it was not difficult right now if you are able to understand this good enough right if you are not able to understand please watch the video again multiple times until you are clearly able to understand this concept. Then only we will move to the next topics, right? So this was it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye, take care, have a nice day.